How's it going Eliminators? Today we're going to be doing a little different video. I bought a truck and I wanted to show you guys. So let's get right into it. So here it is guys. This is a 2019 F-150. Being from Canada, we do have some pretty severe Canadian winters. So I did go with the 4x4 package. For this build, I chose the 5 liter V8 instead of Ford's EcoBoost engine. The 5 liter is a tried and tested engine and it's pretty much bulletproof guys. Plus, I would never get a truck that wasn't a V8. Now, not only is it a 4x4, but it also has the tow package, and my trailer connectors are integrated directly into the bumper, which is super nice. The only problem with getting a regular cab short box, like I have here, with 4x4 and the tow pack is that the rear end of this truck is extremely high. And I don't like that guys. The rear end is too high, not only from an appearance point of view, but also from a usability point of view. The higher the rear of the truck is, the more work I'm gonna have to do if I have my ramps on the back of here and I wanna pull in a snow blower or something into the rear of the bed. The higher it is, the steeper that angle is. So I've picked up a pair of Ford Performance drop shackles and they will lower the rear of this truck by an inch and a half but simply lowering this truck an inch and a half in the back will not be enough so I'm also going to be doing what's known as a rear 4x4 block delete so right in between the axle and the leaf springs is a block and you can remove that to get yourself an extra I'd say about inch and an eighth of drop the only thing you have to replace when you do a block delete is your u-bolts so you never want to reuse u-bolts but you'll see that if you remove the block then the nuts on those U-bolts are gonna go up higher. So what a lot of guys do is when they do a 4x4 block delete, they replace the 4x4 U-bolts with a set of two-wheel drive U-bolts, which are shorter because two-wheel drive trucks do not have those blocks. So with the combination of the Ford Performance drop shackle combined with the rear 4x4 block delete, you get approximately two and a half to two and three quarters inch of drop. Now I did a measurement from the front and the rear wheel wells. The front of this truck measured at around 37 inches and the rear measured at around 40 and three quarters of an inch. So I'm assuming that if I do this drop, it may just have a very slight rake from the back to the front. So I'm gonna be working over the next couple weeks to get this truck level to my liking. Now the suspension of the truck doesn't actually change. All you do is change the location of where the leaf spring connects to the frame. So there's the bracket that holds a shackle and that shackle goes up and you guys can see that it holds the leaf spring. So all we're doing is going to be removing that shackle and installing a longer shackle so that it brings the leaf spring up farther, which will then drop the truck altogether in the rear. Now, the only problem in doing that is the way that Ford designs these and assembles these trucks, you can see that they put the bolt from the inside going out. That's an issue when you want to remove this to do the drop shackle because if you'll notice here, the fuel tank is there. So the fuel tank actually has to be dropped so you can slide out that bolt and then drop the leaf spring. Coming over to the right side here, you guys can see it is the same thing. The bolt goes from the inside out. So on the rear right side, the muffler is in the way. So you do have to remove the muffler and get that out of the way just so you can go ahead and remove that. Now with the M-3000-HA one and a half inch drop shackle kit, Ford does supply a set of two and a half degree axle shims. And what they do is simply go in between the axle and the leaf spring, and that keeps what's known as a pinion angle at the factory level. So the pinion angle is the angle of your drive shaft in relation to the rear differential and axle. So whenever you're lifting a truck with a lift kit or lowering a truck with a drop kit, you're gonna change your pinion angle. So Ford has included those shims to keep that pinion angle at the same angle that it is currently. Now the only extra thing you have to do, if you're gonna do a shackle drop and a rear block delete, you're going to have to shim your transmission because that's gonna be dropping it that additional inch, maybe inch and an eighth. So if you're going with a two and a half drop in the rear, Ford recommends that you also install a 5 16 transmission shim. For the rear differential, I ended up going with a 355 gear ratio with the electronic locking differential. Ford offers many gear ratios, including the 373, the 355, the 331, and I believe there's one or two below that. So the higher the rear differential number, 
the taller the gear will be, and the lower that number, the longer the gear will be. A higher number means better acceleration and less top speed, and a lower number means slower acceleration and a higher top speed. So not only is this truck a regular cab short box, but it's also a V8. So this thing's super quick as it is, guys. With the addition of the 355 gear ratio that I went with, this truck is a rocket off the line. Now this truck comes equipped with a 10 speed automatic transmission. So your eighth, ninth and 10th gears are super long overdrive gears, which means that first, second and third are really tall. So to pair the rear 355 gear ratio with this 10 speed transmission, this truck is awesome at pretty much any RPM range. It's great for driving around town. It's super quick. And when I got onto the highway and I was doing 100 kilometers an hour back home, the truck was running at around 1,250 RPM, which wasn't even that bad. Now, because it's the XLT, it does have a rear backup camera, which is pretty much cheating already. It makes backing up the truck alone or with a trailer super easy. I also opted to go with the Ford factory spray and bed liner here. I figured why not? I wanted a bed liner anyways, and instead of getting one done after I received the truck, I might as well just get it from the factory. I believe that was an extra $650. Now, this tailgate here does not have a tailgate assist on it. So what I'm gonna be doing for one of the mods is I'm gonna be installing a tailgate assist, but I'm gonna be installing the Ford factory one that goes inside of the rear right tail light here. So I'm gonna remove that. I'm gonna do a full video on that installation. And that just kind of hides it and makes it an integral piece of the truck. Other DZ or aftermarket tailgate assists are little actuators that replace this here. So you just remove this and you replace this cable with an actuator. Now, in addition to the tow pack, I also opted to go with the trailer brake controller, which simply allows me to adjust electronic or hydraulic brakes on a trailer. And I also opted to go with the factory vinyl flooring. So if I ever spill coffee or any kind of drink, then it makes cleaning up the inside of the cab super easy. You guys can see that the build quality when it comes to the vinyl floor is a little less than what you would normally see with a carpet interior, but that's no problem because I've ordered a couple WeatherTech floor mats that I will be doing a video on as well. You guys can also see that it has the gray, or as Ford calls it, the dark earth cloth interior. I was buying this truck and I would love to do some videos on this because I do plan on installing quite a bit of aftermarket components. Now I did a little poll on the YouTube channel about a week ago. So in that poll I simply asked if you guys would mind if I did a couple automotive related videos. Maybe some installs, maybe some product reviews and 57% of you guys said yes with an additional 25% saying that they didn't mind they'd still watch the videos. So because you guys were so enthusiastic about watching some some automotive videos, I've decided that I'm gonna be filming all of the work that's done to this truck with the exception of the rear drop kit because I'm sending that into the shop to get done and then it's covered under warranty because it's a Ford OEM product. Everything else I'm gonna be doing myself, including a k and Blackhawk cold air intake and also an MBRP stainless steel side exit exhaust. And I also have some 22 inch dub baller wheels in silver coming and they're gonna be wrapped with some 305-45 R22 Nitto 420S tires. I'm getting them from Tire Trackers and they should be in the first week of October. And if you guys didn't notice already, we had to go with some custom Eliminator plates. So apart from the 22 inch wheels, the Nitto tires, the k and Blackhawk air intake, and also the MBRP side exit exhaust. There's not too many other mods that I'm gonna be doing as far as performance goes. The tailgate assist and the floor mats are things that I kinda want. So just a little video on the new truck. I hope you guys enjoy it. Like I said, I still will be doing small engine repair content, but I'm really interested in getting into some automotive content as well. So like I said, I'll probably be phasing that in as time goes on. So I just wanted to do a little update video here. I now have the Ford Racing or Ford Performance drop shackles in the back. They are one and a half inch drop shackles, but it appears after I took a measurement with an empty fuel tank that it lowered the rear end approximately one inch. So it dropped it from around the 40 and three quarter, you know, 41 that my measurement was before. I now have approximately 80 liters of fuel in the tank. This truck has an 87 liter fuel capacity. So, you know, still with a rake in the rear, but it's not as bad as it was before. And what we're gonna do now, like I was saying previously, 
is the drop shackles here. They are installed. So you guys can see it just brings up the position of where the leaf spring bolts to. And you guys can see that they do have the two and a half degree shims, but we're gonna go ahead and remove the rear four by four blocks. I took a measurement and they do measure exactly one and an eighth inch, and then that'll lower the truck another inch and an eighth. So we should get around two inches of rear drop. And I think what I'm gonna do now, my next step is I'll measure the front again and measure the rear again with about 80 liters of fuel in the tank and then I can get a better idea of how low it will sit with another inch out of the rear end. I think it'll look absolutely perfect once the 22 inch wheels get on here. I think it'll really give an aggressive look to this truck. So that's it for today's video guys. I just wanted to do a basic overview of the truck as it was stock before I start doing some of these modifications to it. Like I said, I did do a poll on the YouTube channel and the majority of you guys were interested in seeing some automotive related content. So I'm actually kind of happy that that happened because I am super interested in making some of these videos with the new truck. So if you guys did enjoy this video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week. So be sure to stop on by next week, check the channel out for new content. And as always guys, thanks for watching.